Hello guys, welcome or welcome back. My name is Emma and if you guys are new here, I'm a matriculating student and I'll be going into medical school this fall. I've been sharing my journey on here for almost like four years now throughout my undergrad experience and now going to medical school. I wanted to do like a mini series on my channel sharing with you guys different parts of my application and how I went about completing them. And in today's video specifically, we're going to be talking about the personal statement. A personal statement is including your primary Primary, and it's supposed to show the medical schools who you are and what you stand for and what your mission is as a doctor. And because they're not seeing you, the only thing that they can see is what you write down on your application. And this part of your application is super, super crucial because everyone has good stats. Almost everyone is super smart, top of their class. So you're competing with all of these super smart people and the only thing that makes you different is your story. So if you guys have been watching my channel, I emphasize having a good story because that's what differentiates you from everybody else. If your stats are good and your story is not, it may jeopardize your opportunity into getting an interview. I'm going to show you guys my personal statement so you guys have a good idea how to go about writing it. I know I wish I had this video because not a lot of people around me are doing this process so it's nice to always hear different opinions, different views and things to help you in your process so that is what I hope to do with this video. So let's get into reading my personal statement. With my arms spread out and running as fast as I could, I turned my parents living room into an arena and the concrete floor was my racetrack. In the middle of my race, suddenly, I felt a hand pick me up from nowhere with my legs dangling off the floor. In shock, I looked up and it was my dad. He had such an excited look on his face that was so contagious and made me laugh. He then asked me, do you want to return to America? I excitedly said, yes. At the time, I was four years old and had no idea what America was like even though I was born in Rhode Island. I only stayed in the US for three months before traveling to Nigeria. That winter, my family and I won a lottery for us to come to America. As a second generation Nigerian immigrant, I became a minority in a new country. I realized that many things were not the same, including healthcare. I remember as a child waiting in the long lines of the Philadelphia Free Clinic to receive my yearly checkups. The free clinic was filled with people from all backgrounds, and unfortunately, some patients were mistreated due to their inability to speak English or comprehend the new culture. This made a lasting impression on me as I wanted to help, but was not equipped at the time. Although I did not know it then, this began my interest in medicine. Growing up in Philadelphia, I was exposed to different cultures and languages. One language in particular that grasped my attention was Spanish. In middle school, I was a lackadaisical student watching the clock rather than listening to the teacher. Then on a fine day, my Spanish teacher pulled me aside and said quite sternly, Emma, you're failing Spanish. I looked at her in the eyes and started bawling. That was the day I promised myself it would be the last time I would ever fail a class. That was also the first time I picked up Spanish as a second language and unlocked a side of myself I never thought existed. There was the girl that put on resilience. I watched every telenovela I could get around to and listened to all kinds of Spanish music. At the end of that year, I graduated with my first academic award from my Spanish class. The hyper-focus and self-discipline took me further than anticipated and I decided to replicate that virtue in my future studies to come. In college, sophomore year, I braced myself to take on the MCAT and do a self-study plan on physics, anatomy, and biochemistry. My goal was to free up my 2023 summer so that I could conclude my Spanish minor in Ecuador. While there, I'll be immersing myself in the Spanish language and culture by living in a host home and broadening my understanding of medicine by entering at the San Francisco Hospital in Quito, Ecuador. During my time in college, I received an opportunity to shadow a gastrointestinal surgeon. He worked at the VA hospital and clinic in the city of Philadelphia, where I was exposed to a diversity of patients from all races and backgrounds. 
I got to see firsthand the long lasting effects of a war on patients. Most of the patients dealt with PTSD. Those that confronted their situation received counseling while others coped with drugs, alcohol, anger, and sometimes a combination of either or. Due to these mental health struggles, they neglected their health until it became an emergency. Witnessing their realities became a burden for me to plunge into the field and help troopers. Seeing how he treated patients with so much empathy and respect was quite uplifting and inspiring. He educated them about their conditions and explained the risks involved in their procedure in a warm manner. He also formed a relationship with them before the end of their visit, which was captivating. He taught me the importance of building a relationship with the patient to stimulate trust and reduce anxiety during their visit. After this experience, my desire to work with minorities, mental health groups, and underserved patients increased. The ability to hold interpersonal relationships is essential for doctors. Throughout my college years, I found ways to serve my community. I volunteered at the Lynchburg General Hospital. My duties included taking patients to diagnostic testings, discharging them in wheelchairs, and delivering flowers and mails to the patient's room. I realized most patients needed someone to talk to. So I took every opportunity to connect with the patients that came my way. In my local church, I served in the worship team and children's ministry and led as vice president of the young adults ministry. This deepened my relationship within my community as I served people from all ages and all walks of life. My goal in becoming a physician is to improve healthcare with education, compassion, and interpersonal relationships. I aspire to reduce the gap between language barriers and racial disparities with experience in research, linguistic skills, and community service. I believe I can achieve this goal accompanied by like-minded people in medical school. So there we go, guys. There is my personal statement. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it valuable. One thing I want to emphasize here is that I shared a little bit about my background and how that came into play and where my mission is in the medical field because there's so many reasons why people want to go into medicine, but make sure your story is very personal to you. And I made sure to do this by explaining why my background is important and how that came Came into medicine, explaining my interest and in how that came into medicine and what I hope to do in the future for after I become a physician. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!